Uh, we're joined now by Mr. Femi Ajinio, who is the chairman of E11 Group. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Well, so much uh, has been said there, uh, straight away accusing the E11 Group. Yes. What's going on in Ekiti about this matter? Well, good morning, uh, gentlemen. Uh, what is going on in Ekiti is uh, quite unfortunate. It's embarrassing to us. It's unheard of anywhere in the world. It's becoming and unbecoming of... Uh, the character we have now as the governor elect. We remember in 2006 when he was a page. Before then, as governor, we know what we went through under his uh, leadership as governor of the state. When eventually the party chose him as their flag bearer, to a very, very uh, great surprise. Because what we were planning was just at the issue of uh, debate trying to discuss the <coughs> development, hearing from the contestants. Those were the kind of things we were planning early this year. But along the line, we begin to hear that... Uh, who, who was planning this? The E11 members. The question Usually. is, who is the E11? E11, we are groups, group of people, individuals. 11 of you? Several of us. The issue of... I mean, the issue... I mean, what, how we came about 11 is the first set of 11 equity indigents that met on the first day to inaugurate the E11, to start the group. As of today, we are more than 100. But 11 are the dominant members. All everybody, decisions. All everybody is, is a democratic thing, a group. So it's not even an issue of 11 people taking a decision on something. No. E11 does not even come into our life at all. It's just the name. Just, it end, that's the end. What is it? Just 11 group. That, uh, the, the best of in a football match, the best eleven. And, and, and they are it's... members of what political party? No, no, no. We, we have several. We are non-political. Non but your members group, occupy political positions. Oh, of course. Every, we even encourage them. Initially, what we said was that people should not even go into politics. But along the line, we now realize that there is no way we can achieve our aims and objective of economic development if we don't get involved in the political. Uh, what goes on in the politics, especially during uh, the press first uh, term of uh, governor, uh, former governor of the state, Fayoshi, where there was, no, there was no development, where chaos, all sorts of negative well, things. That, that's subjective wow. because while you think that other people think otherwise. Of course, of course, yes. Uh, <clears throat> the facts are there for everybody to see. For but the whole world. How is it that with this matter with the judiciary, yes. how did he come to accuse the E11 <clears throat> of being an interested party? and trying to scuttle his um, inauguration. Let me say it very, very clear. I am an indigenous of the state. Every member of E11 is a member of, is an indigenous of the state. To that extent, we are stakeholders. I am a businessman. I'm an investor. As, at my age, what I'm thinking is, when I retire, I should go home and do something and take care of my people. As an investor, we want to do business. As you know, these are the kind of things we are talking about. Development, empowerment of the people, development of the state. But this is not what we know can happen under his leadership. And that was why we said no. This is, we have seen his government in the past. Now we cannot give him another chance. We have several other members uh, of, uh, I mean, so several citizens, indigenous of the state, who are, under, who are in PDP that are qualified to run as governor. We have over 14 of them as a, a governorship candidates. We were preparing for a debate to choose one of them so that we can know what and what, who and who will be able to do what for us. But unfortunately, that did not happen. We now saw that somebody who has been accused or accused of several things, several impossible things in the whole world, was now imposed on, as a governorship candidate for PDP. It was immediately we had that we did that. We knew that that we went around the whole state, we visited all the others, we told them our position. But. He has since been elected. Yes. A landslide. Yes. He won all the local governments. So you said, The yeah. people of Ikiti have decided. It's not so I said. Okay. That's what it is. That's what, you, that's what we saw. But so, let me tell you the fact of the matter. Yeah. Before the election, we have gone to court to say this man was not qualified. Before the election? Before the election, we have gone to court to say, no, this guy is not qualified. Having been impeached, having been indicted, immediately he submitted this form. We went to INEC, applied to, I mean, INEC, collected the forms for the, all the candidates that were going to run for governorship. We checked because we, it was a surprise to us that this guy cannot cross the screening. 
Not even the SSS screening, not even the NX screening, not even the... What, what day did you institute the case in court? On the 23rd of May. On the 23rd of May. You will remember that Bruni, there, 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 there is a time uh, where when uh, uh, forms must be submitted by uh, to INEC. It is at that point that we knew that if when the forms have been submitted, we now have to apply, uh, <coughs> advise a lawyer to seek... Uh, they did all these forms from INEC. I mean, from INEC. It's a legitimate, we have the legitimate right to request for those, for those forms. And that was at that point that we requested the forms, that we now took all the forms, screened them, now saw that, oh, there were a lot of no's and yes in some places that we felt, that we felt was not going to be good for us. That he has not told us the truth. He has not told INEC the truth. He has not told Nigerians the truth. And that we said, if all these ones are there, then we have a good ground to go to court. We have lawyers among us. You know, you know talk, looking at your body, because I remembered you said something when uh, you turned 10, yes, your 10th yes, anniversary yes, of yes, the yes, E11, yes, yes. so it's 10 years old. Yes. And I, I'll give you a quote. You said, we are not mafians, but only passionate about the development yes. of Ekiti State. Yes. Though E11 is not political, but we give our members the freedom to join political parties, which course, you yes. just highlighted yes, here again. Yes. And again, you also said some of your members have excelled in governance. Yes. Uh, that coming from you, some would say is, uh, it, it amounts to being selfish in your statement because uh, you, you seem not to be political, yeah. you seem to be apolitical in your yes, own yes, outlook, yes. but in a subtle way you have infiltrated the polity of Ekiti State with your members uh, to have made some people think that you are more or less like a mafia group trying to change governance in we, the state. We are not mafia. I will say that anytime. We are not political. If you see the way we debate at E-level meetings, you will appreciate what I'm talking about. We have PDP members. We have Labour ma ma members. We have uh, uh, Accord. We have uh, APC members. We throw everything to them. Even the issue of uh, governorship, uh, uh, governor, uh, candidature, we debated it. Uh, I even asked the PDP members to talk to tell us. Even at the point before he was uh, nominated, what each of, each of them told us was that never, never. That is either Prince Adiyeye, Bisi uh, Omoyeni, or Ulubolade. That members of his own party or in members your, of own, in, your in, your own. in E11. Those were the three options they gave us. Weeks to the primaries, they came back and said, look, the feelings we are getting is that they are likely going to impose or strategically uh, swing this thing towards uh, Fayoshe. We said, well, Tell, advise us, assuming if Ayoshe is now your candidate, what do you advise us to do? He said, ah, well, as far as he is concerned, he will not leave the party, but he will not work for Ayoshe. The other one said, well, I'm, me, I'm, I'm going to be on my own. I'm not going to join APC. I don't believe in jumping up and down. There were a lot of other things like that. These are the kind of things we discussed. So, even APC members said, well, I, I can No, 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 it's not possible. But eventually it came up. It was at that point, he said, why, how, how did this thing happen? How... How has he been able to manipulate himself or manage himself out of INEC and now to be a candidate? And that was but, how but, but you calling it manipulation, but people will say, I think uh, he, he, he's clean and clear because for someone to have been able to, well, come clean in his own political party and also sail through the election proper, at the end of the, there, you the, say the end of it, it was manipulation. At the end of it all, our lawyer said, INEC does not even have the power to stop any candidate. But the court can do. And that was why we went to court immediately. On May 29? Yes. Democracy Day? Yes. On May, on May, May 23, sorry, May 23. To go to court immediately. At that point, what we, the lawyers advised was that it was going to be an accelerated hearing. I was in the court. It was agreed by the two parties that, look, this case has to be done with before the election. Along the line, there was court, there was a strike. There was the judicial holiday, vacation or whatever. All those ones prolonged the issue, I mean, the matter. But even at that, when the court resumed, we thought that, yes, it was good. Since the issue of isolated hearing has been agreed by the parties, it's, it's a pre-election matter. It doesn't really have to be uh, even with election or without election. Uh -huh. Even their lawyer said that in the court. I was there. That, look, this is a pre-election matter. It doesn't matter. We can take our time, blah, blah, blah. But the judge said, look, let us do these things as soon as we can, so that we don't drag the issues. So, and that was how the issue came till that, till the last day, on the 22nd of uh, uh, 
September now that the courts has to be invaded and all the other crises started. Why is E11 afraid of uh, Mr. Fayoshe? Integrity is the first issue. Integrity. A kitty man is known for his integrity. A kitty man is known for his gentility. A kitty man is known for humbleness. A kitty man is known for the rule of law. Why don't, we, why don't we then uphold that integrity of the equity man that has given their vote to Mr. Fayoshe? Let the court tell us whether in the first instance he is, he is qualified. We are, we are Nigerians. Let the court tell us the truth. If the court says Fayoshe is qualified to run, I will be the first person to congratulate him on the pages of his paper. We will do an advert for him. And if he wants us to support him in his government, we will do that. But a decision where someone will feel that you will not, you don't want to obey the rule of law, and you want to take the law into your own hand, you don't want to, you are even said on the, on, on, I mean, to everybody that he will not submit his man, he will not drop this mandate, just like Shegun will drop his own mandate. Shegun will need to drop his mandate at the Supreme Court, to the Supreme, to the order of the Supreme Court. If you are saying that, it means we are still not, we are not seeing the end yet. You know.